Good morning, white birds of Svalbard. They go up to the crossing, but they don't cross. Because they want to make sure they're safe. Now, I don't know if they're really aware of what traffic is like in other cities. This ain't it. But, you know, white birds gotta be safe. Oh, that one little daredevil is popping up on the guardrail. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. Some more birdies coming to join. Seriously, they all walk to the top of the guardrail and they stop. Good morning, Svalbard. It is day, full day two of us being here. Um, I have somehow <laughs> had a um, change in the person that I am staying with in my Airbnb. Let's go rob a bank. The irony of that is that we learned yesterday that one person, like eight years ago or something, tried to rob the bank and um, uh, go? was unsuccessful in like seven minutes. Yeah, they caught him in seven minutes. But also, like, come on. There's nowhere for you to run. Also, how much money do they have here? <laughs> well. Like, are they storing cash reserves here? Like, One of the requirements for you to be here is mm. for you to show... Um, that you can sustain yourself because one of the reasons why the um, taxes are so low is because there's no social services here for you at all. Um, and so you do have to show on a continual basis that you have enough money and that you can support yourself. So, you know, I'm sure that the Svalbard Bank, wherever it is, we're going to go visit it, mm -hmm. um, has some money in its a reserves. Bit of money. Yeah. But, you know, like go rob a bank somewhere else. Or, not or much, no, no, no lawyer, this is go. terrible lawyer advice. <laughs> She's not allowed to give you advice, and, and disclaimer, she'll tell you, unless she's been formally retained, she cannot give you legal advice or make recommendations. But I'm not a lawyer, and therefore I can give you recommendations. Don't rob a bank. Not in Svalbard. Not anywhere. All right, let's go Correct. for our little adventure today. Correct. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Everything's built on stilts. Houses, buildings, like everything. It's permafrost. And so, with the permafrost, it, it uh, it, you know, if, if the permafrost ends up in the house, it, it, no good. Whole house, bye-bye. Frozen. Um, there, the old hospital is, is full of snow because somebody turned off the, the system to, to keep it warm. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so they have these pipes above ground because if they were underground, they would definitely be frozen. Um, and then there's a, a little hot water transfer station down the road that, as the heat that's generated from the coal mine, or the coal power plant rather, heats up the water on really, really cold days, like when it gets to minus 30, minus 50, it goes through a transfer station that reheats it again and reboils everything. Uh, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to make it through all the pipes staying hot. Another thing that's special about being in Svalbard is that there are more snowmobiles than there are people. So here's one snowmobile parking lot. Here's another one. A really big one. And here is an even bigger parking lot for snowmobiles. Yeah. Very frequently are people on snowmobiles, but I also understand that it's snowmobile season right now where everything is frozen over and so you're able to, you know, get on those frozen lakes. Goulash looking goulash. A Spanish omelet with bacon and some potato on it, like, like very little potato and some bread and butter. Cheers. Got a petite. Cheers. Got a petite. When you're this far north, this is what you're looking at. And when you only have one Toyota dealership, uh, it really tells you why every dang car here is a Toyota. Like right down to the oldies. This is the world's northernmost hospital in Svalbard. They have a few limited services, but a few things of note um, is that you can't give birth in Svalbard. And a month before your due date, they send you off to Tromsø to give birth. Um, if you have any serious injuries, they will send you to Tromsø. You're also not allowed to die in, Tromsø, in Svalbard. Yes, that's true if too. If they can prevent it. <laughs> if they can prevent it. Yeah, if they know you're going to die, you also get shipped off to Tromsø. So this is that uh, transfer station that we were talking about before, uh, where if it gets really, really cold, 
then they'll heat up the water and all of the town's water will come through this pump. And you can actually see into it. Something that I've learned about myself in the Arctic is that my hands are really susceptible to being frozen <laughs> after five minutes of being outside of the mitts. And so recently Christopher showed me something really cool, which is that I can control my phone and make these lovely video clips for you all by swiping with my nose. Insert footage here. What are you doing? <laughs> Why aren't you using your fingers? <laughs> it's too cold! Oh, there you go. Did you get, did you get what, you, what you're trying to We're back at the grocery store. Back at the grocery store. We wanted to show you something really interesting. So we came here Sunday when we landed. We came here yesterday. And of course we're back today. And we're looking for some protein, you know, for dinner. Christopher loves his red meat. So we're looking for some beef, some lamb, and let us show you the options that we have at the grocery store in Svalbard. Open this. There are the options. We asked um, the nice lady at the meat counter and she said that perhaps, maybe, that more meat will arrive on the plane today, but no guarantees. And it shows up when it shows up. That is life on a remote island close to the North Pole. But guess what? Now we can have lots and lots of chicken, which I love. And that seems to be the only type of protein that is left. I wonder why. Nobody else likes it here. It doesn't keep you warm. So we wanted to bring you along our walk home. This is the hill that we walk up. It's, I mean, it's a little bit steep, but it's not too bad. We gotta do grocery runs and small trips so that we can carry them with no problem. But like, look at that view. The mountains aren't snow capped. I feel like the mountains are like covered in whipped cream on the top. <laughs> or cool whip. Get it, because it's cold. Picked up supplies or something. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just the perils of living in slumber. Sliding down the stairs. Did you record your little out. your little slippy slip? Yep. Yeah, cool. I'm not putting that on video. That'd be cool. Look at our cute little house in the nighttime. Look at how beautiful it looks in the evening. Everything is just like so still. The water is still in We're walking to our first. Soul Fest event, yeah. which is the Sun Festival. Yeah. And it's at the Culture House. Mm -hmm. The Culture House. Mm -hmm. Though we booked flights and planned for this week months ago, we luckily managed to line it up with the Sun Festival yeah. in Svalbard, which happens once a year to welcome um, the sun because for several months they live in complete darkness in the winter and so this should be very fun. Yeah. It has to be fun because it runs the sun. <laughs> okay I'm done. Are you? We weren't so sure. I mean we knew around the time that we wanted to come for the sun festival and it, it made sense that this is why we did the Svalbard part of our trip later on rather than come here first and then go to Tonka. Yeah. In which case, if we had done it the other way around, Chomsa would have been like a tropical paradise because yeah. it is cold. The, the actual day where the sun rises, which it coincidentally happens tomorrow, which is International Women's Day, which is kind of awesome. Um, for the last few years was either like a week later or a week earlier than this week, okay. for like three or four days. And we thought we were going to miss it, we weren't sure. Um, but yeah, they lined up. There is meant to be music and dancing and singing of traditional Svalbardian songs. Oh, it's the man,
Thank you.